Right, so shall have like fluid. Yes, we're back with more Ocean Avenue. Just came out a couple of days ago for the public update, so here we are. Fairly new stuff for you all. And back to some volleyball in this one as well. So well, I'm going to assume you all know where we were last time. There was a soccer match, Marcus had a migraine, Vic Salm never went out and did some stuff. So, without hanging around too much, let's go and see what's happening with them this time. Monday, September 28th. There isn't much to do but wait. Wait for the inevitable to happen. We all face it eventually. The adrenaline, the sudden rush, the carnal desire, it all surges to a peak. But alas, I must face it. Lunch hour. Floods of students and staff pack the walkways. Why must so many people exist at once in the same location? Most newbies charge the cafeteria, but I, the intellectual, make a dash for the student store. It's still packed. The line to the register extends out to the building. Of course it does. The next ten minutes are pretty bland. One minute of me finding a decent ham sandwich, with the next nine waiting in line. Another five minutes and five spots from the front. What a pain to wait. Is that Kenny? Maybe not. Kenny? Oh, uh, hey, Evan. Ready to check out? Uh, I don't want to cut the line. It's no biggie. You only have, like, one thing, right? I notice a salad container in his hand, a thermos in the other. Uh-huh. Come on. I wave my hand towards myself. Kenny looks around for a second before joining. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, right? That's the spirit. We pay for our items and head towards the benches. Of course all of them are taken. Yes, we'll have to settle for the grass. Kenny places his thermos down, holding his tail as he sits down. Not long after, Marcus spots us, followed by Selma and Vic. Hey, oh, hey, Kenny, what's up? A long time no see. The three of them sit down with us. So, did you enjoy the party on Friday? Yeah, man, had a good time. Did you enjoy the... You know. A contest? Of course. I'm sure these two think the same thing, right? He wraps his arms around Marcus and Selma's shoulders. Yeah, didn't think I'd have to perform, but it was great. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. It's all good. That was a pleasant surprise for all of us. That's a relief. Vic pulls out a sandwich from a paper bag. He proceeds to inhale it within a few bites. I can't be late for practice. Uh, what time is it? I take a look at my phone. 12.35. Shit, I'm almost late. He picks up both his backpacks and springs himself up quickly. I'll see you guys later. See ya. That poor guy always forgets the time. There's something I've had to get on him about. For what? Oh, beach tournaments. He'd always run late whenever I picked him up. I'm not surprised. He'd pick me up first. We'd have to wait forever for him to finally be ready. Oh, sorry about that, Kenny. Oh, I don't mind. I just worried we'd be late. Well, luckily, we never were. It was still annoying, though. I'm lucky we don't have that issue with the soccer team. Oh, uh, how did the match turn out? We tied. Oh. There's still a win in our books. I'm glad to hear that. Marcus starts to poke away at his meal. Yeah. We're going to work on a few things tonight. Just need some reps and stuff on the defence. 
Uh huh, I get it. Uh, something, something, defense helps you win, or something like that. It's a pretty common saying, but it does ring true. Until that's my club team back in high school. We'd rely on smashing the ball hard and fast to avoid playing defense. While my brain zoned out, the other three started eating. A few minutes passed before someone breaks the silence. Anyone got plans for tonight? Besides club practice. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Of course. Well, besides that, any other plans we have? I think homework, dinner and sleep. The two essentials. Exactly. Everyone gives a resounding nod of agreement. I have class in an hour. After that, I'll be working on my music in the recording rooms. Nice. I'm heading to the gym around three. Gotta convert my club's gym reservation. Maybe you could tag along with him as a reminder. Kenny rubs his chin. That's not a bad idea. Why not the walking alarm clock? That would be heaven. Am I being invited along? I don't mean to butt in on anything. Actually, I have class until 3.15. I can meet you there. It works for me. So, does that mean I'm still invited? Of course. Great. And where should we meet? Well, it's important to always have a meeting place. I didn't plan that far ahead. Speaking of planning... Kelly, anything new with your music? Oh, um... Guess you'll have to find out tonight. You're all invited to the music building if you want to hear what I'm working on. Sure. Yeah, for sure. I would, but I have practice all afternoon. You can send me the details after, though. Selma resumes finishing a meal and the rest of us follow suit. is isn't too long after that Kelly heads off to class. Marcus and I leave soon after to study in the library. Hmm. We've been in the library for an hour now. What's getting him to question things this late into our stay? You okay, Marcus? Huh? You sound kind of bummed. I guess. Anything worth telling me? Sure. I may have been too hard on Kenny's club the other day. About Johnny? Oh, the music. I'm not used to people being so open about their tastes. I got a bit stiff and said I didn't really like it when you asked me about it after the party. I almost let a chuckle, stopping myself with a stifled exhale. That's what's bothering you? Wouldn't you feel like a dick judging your friend's interests so harshly? Yeah, but... You didn't seem like you were, at least as far as I could tell. He was less talkative near the folks at the party. Then again, most of them were chatterboxes on speed compared to the average show. I fell out of place. I'm not used to hanging around Kenny's friends. Well, at least for that long. How do you think I feel coming here? You have a point. I'm being too critical. You're pretty hard on yourself, dude. I know, like I want to talk. But seriously, you don't need to. You've always helped me out when I needed something. I'm sure you do the same with everyone else here. He's always been like that. So many times I'd see him offer a helping hand to practice. He'd put away stray equipment, partner up with the odd man out. No wonder he chose you all those years ago. What I meant to say was, it's okay to feel out of place. You can get new experiences and friends out of those. If you don't, hey, at least you tried something new. You know what? You're right. And it's three o'clock. I put my phone away. Oh, curse your punctuality. Marcus swiftly closes his books and slides them into his backpack. As for me, I only had to put my laptop away. The perk of having digital homework. Well, shall we? We shall. 
Marcus leads me into the gym, holding the door behind him for me. Thanks. A sure thing. The gym director's office is in the left hallway. Mind if I join you? Of course. We start our trek down a narrow hallway to the left. Various photos of old volleyball stars and teams line the walls. I wait outside the office as Marcus enters a small corner office, hosting a middle-aged human with receding grey hair. So, I'm with the volleyball club. George wanted me to check with you to see if the reservations went through. Hey, yep, you guys are booked through April 6th to 10pm, Mondays, Wednesdays. Perfect. If it's possible, could you tell the men's varsity team to leave their nets up on those days? Not a problem. I have the beginner's volleyball class booked between you guys from 3.30 to 5. Oh, great. A few courteous exchanges later, and Marcus is back out of the office. It looks like we're in. Sweet. That makes two of you with booked places. Two of us? Two of... Oh, yeah. Kenny's Club has a theatre now. Well, now that that's done, want to drop in our Vic? Uh, this will probably be the closest I get to greatness. Might as well stretch that claim to fame. Sure. Marcus closes the office door behind him. We start our return to the gym entrance. If it weren't for my years of high school and college volleyball experience, I'd feel claustrophobic in these hallways. Why do the gyms only make these things five feet wide? Never wider, never narrower. You'd think they'd be considered fire hazards nowadays. They make it feel even more cramped. They stack photos on top of each other like they're wall tiles. What's the deal with that? Oh, Johnny. Hey, Marcus. What are you doing here? Sorting things out in the office. What are you doing here? Enjoying the fine spectacle of volleyball. Really? Name one volleyball action. Slam? Marcus demeanor deflates as he sighs. What are you really doing here? I was going to say hi to Vic. You could have been a little less creepy about it. Practices are open to the public. At least that's how it was in my old college. I don't want him seeing me. Reuben. Who else would I be talking about? At least you wouldn't beat me up with a slipper. Are you seriously peeking again? You're ridiculous. Johnny lets go of the door, leaving us in a quiet standstill. I guess I should say something. Well, shall we enter? Takes him a few seconds, but he eventually agrees. By the time we enter the gym, the athletes are nowhere to be seen. Oh, must have been a quick wrap-up. Didn't even put away the balls. Everything is still left out from their practice, including the net. Well, maybe their coach strung a team meeting on them. I wouldn't be shocked. That guy seems like he has a short temper. And you thought Reuben was mean to you? He looks at Johnny. If Reuben gets his comeuppance, and I'm fine. Marcus and Johnny begin to make small talk. At least they seem amicable now. While they do that, I pull out my phone. Great, it's from Rigborough Kevin. He updates on the money? What is he talking about? Oh, right. I'll send the 40 bucks now. What's this for again? Three dots pop in the reply bubble below. Starter. Gonna be selling supplements. Okay. Hope it works out. His last few business attempts didn't work out. That's up, Vic. <laughs> Hi, Vic. Johnny gives him a sheepish wave. Marcus, seven? Hey, Vic. Why does Johnny always bring the worst out in people? You mean the most chaotic? Same thing. I got your text earlier. Glad you could come. Text? You didn't text me. Marcus turns to Johnny. You could have told me that earlier. I didn't think you would have believed me. 
I did get his number. Johnny pretends to slide a piece of paper Vic's way. You two are ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as you. Who made you the group mom? Does that mean I'm the group daddy? Mm-hmm, daddy. Hey! Wouldn't Selma be the group mom? I need to think about that. Well, they do, so we walk back out to the gym entrance. Hey, Johnny? Who invited you? Vic clicks his tongue while pointing his thumb to himself. To my dismay. You sly fox. Kenny nudges Johnny's shoulder. Looks like we're going to have quite the party on our hands. Kenny takes a glance at Marcus, noticing his scrunched up face. It's okay, Marcus. I'm sure he'll grow on you. Johnny inches closer to Marcus and leans into him. Maybe we should start hiding over before things get too weird. It'd be really weird if he rubbed up on me. As if I'm even worse doing that too. I must have said that out loud. You idiot. Maybe Johnny will grow on me. As long as he can sit still without latching on to anyone. Ah, my heart. It's like my comment was erased from existence. Probably for the better. The theatre kids are breaking out into song again. Oh, don't tell your mama. <laughs> what are you doing tonight? 24 hours ago, you got that look in your eyes. They continue leading the way. Well, at least they're having fun. Right. Can't fault them for that. Have they always done this when you're around them? Ah, this is something new for us. I think we know whose idea it was. Come on, don't hate on the guy. I'm not hating it. Just interrogating. Whatever you say. We make a direct tangle of white building with only three windows by the entrance. If I didn't know it was for music, I'd say this would be some sort of prison. Well, assuming this wasn't in the middle of the university. Marcus holds the door open for me. Or after you. Thanks. I walk inside. Kenny pulls out his computer and electronic keyboard and starts warming up. He plays a few keys, flexing his fingers between bouts of playing. Is flex in the right term? I'm not sure if there's a specific warm-up regimen for finger exercising. He takes a short pause after his last bout. Sorry for the wait. Please be patient. Or doctor, whichever you prefer. Ah! <laughs> Kenny's left hanging for a couple of seconds. Come on, Vic, it wasn't that bad. He leans into Vic, bumping into him with his elbow. Huh? Johnny taps Vic's bicep. He may or may not have given it a squeeze during the process. If you're a doctor, Vic, you'd be a chiropractor. Why is that? You just twist and bang stuff until it pop back in. I wouldn't be that crude. I'd give it a fair and proper assessment of the damage before banging it back in. And Vic we trust. Kenny gets back to his keyboard or computer, playing around with a few more settings. What's on the plate for today? We're working on that ballad submission of the contest. Nice. A ballad? One of them sappy romance songs. How do you know that? Johnny loves them. I got a bit. They hit a soft spot for me. Any suggestions for a warm-up song? Hmm. I would suggest Terry Logan's Hold Me Now. I'll suggest something else because somebody doesn't like their ballots. Well, good. How about Guiding Lights? Well, sure. Kenny rolls his shoulders and neck, exaggerating his motions. Oh! 
The sound comes from Kenny's keyboard. I heard. You and your tip-tap references. I can fix that boo-boo of yours. He winks at Vic. Oh. I think that'll help. He gets up from his chair. Yeah, pardon me. That gave me an idea. What? Vic going to the bathroom? No, the song I just played. He redirects his attention to his computer. Then he starts tapping a few synth pad buttons and computer keys. A few different instruments begin playing. How did you get so good at all those instruments? I was pretty curious from a pretty young age. I started messing around with my dad's piano when I was seven. I began music lessons the following year. Since then I participated in all my school's music programmes. And from there, well, the rest is history. You gain love reps and new tricks through that. It's how I learned the modern stuff. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. Thanks. It kind of runs in the family. That's still pretty amazing. Not everybody hones in on their talents. Has any to hone? Um, pardon me. Johnny gets up quickly and leaves the room. Kenny shrugs off the sudden departure, continue to work on his piece. What a nice melody. I assume this is his song. Now, what's this song called? I left behind. Is this the piece you've been working on? Yep. How can he still play his piano while talking to us? What a skilled musician. Several minutes later. Kenny's been making a lot of progress. He's played where I assume a couple of verses, refining it little by little. Hey guys. Hey, welcome back. By any chance you know Vic left? He's been gone for a while. I saw him in the bathroom. Told me he'll be a while. Oh. Well, you missed all the action. I've been making some progress with this song. Nice. What you got so far? Kenny gets back to playing. He bobs his head back and forth, syncing up with the tempo. Nice. I'm really vibing with this one. Oh, thanks. Who'd you plan on singing it? Um, I'm not sure yet. I wrote a few lyrics and tried singing them myself. But I can see you trying it out. What's up? Are you okay, bud? Feeling just fine. What's going on here? Well, Granny's been playing his song for us. Sweet. Does it sound good? Fantastic. All ready? Prove it. Why, certainly. It's a pretty soothing melody. The only instrument being used so far is a classical piano. Although he tinkered with some synth instruments, he hasn't applied them yet. <laughs> Not bad. But can you add some fancy fake instruments to it? You mean since? Whatever they're called. You know what they're called. You're just messing with me. Right. Kenny jumps to a different part of the song. The music builds up to the synth parts, the same ones he worked on earlier. Still, the piano is the main sound. I like it. Hmm, could use more synths. Of course you say that. He gets back to fine-tuning the song. By now, everyone left for class or dinner besides Kenny and me. We haven't talked for the past hour. He's been working on his music the entire time, only pausing his work just now. What's your favourite music genre? Oh, good question. I have to really think about that. 
I love everything pretty equally. It's pretty hard to make cuts my favourite. I bet. You must be exposed to a lot of things with how much you play. But in World Vision, you give me a broad palette. If I really had to choose... I'd say pop. Most of the modern World Vision songs are that. Nice. There's a lot of hidden gems in it. What's this song about? Oh, it's a pretty standard romance. Is this what World Vision people like? Is there a certain theme you're going for? Love, peace, or something like that. That's what all of them are usually about, not to diss on my favourite contest. But actually, it's about a broken relationship. Could I hear the lyrics you have? Oh, sure. He starts from the beginning. Time. The time has barely passed now. Won't you wait? You've barely even spoken. Is it too late? I didn't mean to let this be. Words are twisted like bottles opened. I blame my own pride, but you say that I'm broken. We could have done this better, better. Your grip and whines, I'm left behind. And yeah, that's all I got for now. That's pretty touching. Kind of cheesy, but it sounds heartfelt. It's one of the few songs I plan to submit. This one is one of my safety options. In my opinion, it's not one of my better ones. It's fine, but it isn't something I'd normally listen to. There's some better ones I'm working on, but I'm halting off on them for now. It makes sense. Can't work on too many things at once. It's too bad school doesn't consider that. They really don't. We make small talk for a little bit before Kenny continues his work. I begin my homework in the meanwhile. I've been needing to catch up on it. The first indoor club practice. The start for a new opportunity. Maybe this will be my chance to start anew. Find a place I belong. That is if I can jump the hurdle of tryouts. Hey, heaven. Kenny's in front of me, leading the way. And what's up? I think you'll like the guys. Oh? We're pretty chill, and the tournaments are a good time. They're not too noisy like my high school games. I can see that being overwhelming. I forgot you ever play club in high school, right? Those tournaments can get really loud. Usually a dozen more courts would be lined up end to end. Tons of referee whistles would go off over each other while numerous teams are shouting and cheering. Not a fun experience for some. Right. Are those noisier? Oh, yeah. Well, these ones are different. Would you say they're more intimate? Oh, yeah. But not like that. I chuckle. Oh, I know. We arrive at the gym once again. This time there's a table in front of the gym entrance. Hi, welcome to the volleyball club. Before you go, we require you to sign some liability forms. Okay. I take my clipboard. Kenny takes his. Great to see you back, Kenny. Oh, thanks, Duke. The striped hyena holds out a fist to him. Kenny taps it back lightly. Yeah, you can also fill in your tryout forms now. Okay. When are tryouts? Uh, two weeks from today. But you can fill them out now? Uh huh. We let people they don't have to remember later. Cool. We both finish filling out our forms. I'll see you in there. See ya. Yo! Weren't you outside just now? Oh, that's Luke. They're twins. He got you for a second, though. There are three courts set up, all of which have players warming up. Most of them are passing the ball back and forth, taking up the two outer courts. The middle court has a line of people hitting. Henry is setting them. Hey, guys. 
How did the recording go? I didn't get much done. But it was fun to have Evan there. Nice. A friend? I finally made a friend at San Vicente. Well, besides Marcus, but that was a given. I shouldn't be so ecstatic. It's starting to look at me weird. No, oh, thanks, man. You're welcome. We finished putting our court shoes on. All right, everyone, bring it in. Welcome to the volleyball club. I'm sure most of you are familiar with how we start things. Let's start with some king of the court. A three-on-three -three mini game. The winning of the point stays on while the loser goes to the back of the line. We'll start with back row attacks only and take it from there. Everyone brings it in, raising their arms. Knights on three. One, two, three. Knights! Three lines form behind each court. There's about 20 guys per court. Dang. I got a lot of people to beat out. Does it matter which one I join? Nah, seems like everyone is going on courts randomly. The seemingly talented people and the newbies look like they're mixing in with each other. I decide to join the centre court where Marcus is. A few of the beach players are on it along with several new faces. Service! A Simone human a few inches taller than me, and much more solid, brings his arm back. He appears to be float-serving. And just like that, the first rally commences. Henry, who's inside the net, gets under the passed ball, ready to set. He sets it to my right side, sending to a muscular yet lean grey wolf. The wolf leaps high and beams the ball over with a loud crack. The ball bounces off the human's arms. He barely managed to raise him up before he made contact. The ball skis over the net and out of bounds, far right. His team jogs back into line, making room for the new challenges. That guy packed a punch. Sure looked like it. Why does he look familiar? I haven't seen him before. Maybe he transferred. Of course. He's from Trinidad College. I faced his team before I transferred. Oh no, I remember him being a starter for them. That's going to mean one less spot for me. The next few challengers fail to beat the current victors. It isn't until they make a botched pass they are sent off. At this point, I finally get on the court for the first time. Ready? You bet. We managed to get the same Simone human from earlier as our third teammate. He prepares his float serve, smacking the ball once again for serving. Looks like it's going too far, but thank our stars a less knowledgeable player takes the ball, making shaky contact with it. Their right side player has to run cross court to save the ball. Huge in these drills, the right side player sets. It's an unfortunate circumstance in this case. The setter can't make clean contact with the ball and ends up sending the ball even further from his teammates. It looks like we won. Marcus runs under the net while the other team exits. I follow suit and swap places with the Samoan. Uh, maybe I should get his name. Uh, what's your name? Oh. Ezekiel. Evan. We get in position while the new team comes on. The set of this isn't Henry or Ezekiel is behind the backline serving. He's another human with a medium tan complexion and bushy eyebrows. He extends his arms, holding the ball in front of him with both hands. There isn't much force behind his serve. The ball appears to be falling pretty close to the net. Mine! We nearly collide. I get the ball up only a couple of feet above me. Marcus has to lean over me to save the broken play. Ezekiel makes the third contact, sending it over the high pass to the back right corner. When I look up, I see that Kenny is where the ball is heading. He takes the ball over his head and makes a pretty poor first contact, passing the ball low and directly above himself. The setter only has one option for who to set, Kenny. He makes a wonky two approach to the set and hits the ball into the net. Sorry. His team walks off the court, and them talk to each other and just enter their respective lines. My bad. I'll let you have that. No, it's okay. I'll call louder next time. We tend to do this with each other. Apologise for one mistake, then respond our own apology disguised as an improvement. As we turn to our receiving positions, I pull up my knee pads again. Once I look up, I see who's serving. I see another wolf behind the service line. Another big wolf? 
This one's got jet black fur with off-white fur around his muzzle. He's preparing a jump serve. This is going to be painful. Other than the off-white fur around his muzzle, he's completely coated in jet black fur. What makes it even scary? He's got half a foot on me and looks pretty strong. Where have I seen him before? He extends his right arm and begins his serve. With a leap into the air, he cracks the ball like a whip. Is it curving? I reach out for it, but it contacts the outer part of my forearm and flies to my side. We hastily exit the court and get back into line. It's like he's on a whole different level compared to everyone else so far. He's quite the server. Yeah, I would have been toast. I'm trying to think. What position did he play? Of course, he's Trinidad starting outside hitter and a good one at that. That spot seems all but locked for him. The odds really are stacked against me. It takes that guy four or five rallies for his team is knocked off. Soon after I see him in line next to me. I think we played each other back in community college. Uh, what's your name again? Alex. Evan. Nice to meet you. I let out a forced grin. I hate to say it but I wish he wasn't here. It made my life easier. After a gauntlet of three on three matchups, Henry calls everyone to conclude the drill. We get a brief water break for our next drill. And what do you think so far? Um. I'm kind of worried for my own sake. And what do you mean? We went up against a lot of good players out there. I struggled with my defence towards the end. Plus, not only do I have to compete against fellow liberos, but also all the guys I played against in community college. He seemed very fixated on that, the community college stuff. But what difference does he make? The numbers to make it, for me, are cut from 30-something down to 4. You guys have it way easier than me. Oh. Kenny takes a second to think. If you think about that too much, you'll only make it harder for you. How? Well, think about it this way. If you're in a plane, all you think about is nailing the lines. You might only focus on doing that, nothing else. Okay. If you don't pay attention to the other things, you're going to compromise them. Well, I think you're onto something, Kenny. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. No problem. I try not to, but it's the reality of my situation. Whether or not I zone in on it, I can't change my predicament. You only have so much time for tryouts. Why not have fun with it? Mm, I guess. People are starting to head back to centre court. Looks like it's time for round two. Can't this hurdle stop you, Evan? And everyone's getting groups based on your main position. Outside to the left, opposite's over here. The big huddle starts to dissolve as these groups form. It's hard to go with the libero group with four of the guys. Could go with the outsides, but based on earlier, I'd probably have no chance as one. You everyone a number, and that'll be your team for the next couple of games. Henry counts off each of us. I'm assigned to Team 3. Who's on Team 3? A few guys walk towards him. Hey, Evan. Hey. Looks like we're teaming up for this one. Uh, teams 1 and 2 are on Court 1, Teams 3 and 4 on Court 2, and Teams 5 and 6 on Court 3. Marx's team moves over to the left court. The only players I recognise on the inside of my court are Luke and George. Are you playing middle this time, Trent? Yeah, going to be opposite this time. Looks like we're going to have some tall pins with you and Terry. Yep. Kenny positions himself in the centre of the court. Terry and Trent follow suit. As I walk towards my spot, someone rolls a ball to me. You all can take a serve. I scoop the ball off the ground. Let's start in row three. Looks like I'm serving first. Ready? One of the opposing players gives a thumbs up. Everyone else seems to be set up. Service. My first serve goes wide left. Yes, I still need to get those jitters out of me. Sorry guys, I'll keep it in next time. It might as well have been a bad omen with the rallies to come. Takes us two more tries to score a point, keeping us a steady two-point deficit after the ten-point mark. Sorry. 
is Kenny's third error. He's been trying to swing at the ball hard but with no success. His swings are too late causing him to hit into the net. We get back to our receiving positions. I'm smack dab in the middle between Terry and another player. A black human I never got the name of. The serve soars deep towards the human. It's a pretty rough contact on as it hits his fingers. The ball is sent a couple feet above his head. I go, I go. It's too fast to set it to get so it looks like it's up to me. Kenny's lined up perfectly with me, but Terry will be the safer option. No one's expecting me to set Kenny. Maybe they'll catch him off guard. I extend my hands and bounce the ball off my forearms. The ball lines up with Kenny's approach. Huh. He didn't expect it. No one did. Maybe this was a terrible idea. I'm so lucky he hit the ball over. Sure, he's lining it up for a hit, but most middles do that as a decoy. The setter on the other side is taken aback by the attack, making a pretty cruddy pass. Doesn't end the rally, but sure puts the opposing team at a disadvantage. Kenny smiles as he runs up to block. It's going outside! The ball flies towards our right, heading towards their outside hitter. Ready, and... The human to Kenny's right side steps right. Kenny follows suit. Nice one, Kenny. Oh, ah. Uh. He scratches the back of his head. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it's kind of sheepish as the team gathers round for high fives. However, his body looks less tense than earlier. Kenny enters a couple more thanks to the guys who are heading back to the net. I well, should own that shit. Huh? Terry turns to me. Kenny barely celebrates his accomplishments. Ah. He can have some pride once in a while. Maybe he's still getting used to things? Why well, has been here over a year now? Not like that. He's still a newcomer to the sport, at least that's what he told me. I think he'll gain that confidence the more he plays. He shrugs his shoulders. Yeah, maybe. Terry walks back to the service line. The rest of the match went pretty well, leaning in our favour as it progressed. We eventually broke the deficit and pulled out the win. Kenny managed to perk up while keeping his humble demeanour. It remained during our next match. That scrimmage was kind of anticlimactic. The next team we played wasn't that good, so we won with a lopsided score. It was the last scrimmage before we took another water break. Guess that's a good note to end on for now. Did you have fun out there? Oh, thanks, Dad. Our first match was pretty close. The next one was kind of boring. Oh. I'm glad you had a good one. Did yours go well? Hmm. Marcus smirks, thinking about it. It was okay. Gee, that helps. I'm sure you did great out there. Thanks, Dad. That's my line. It's not who did it first, but who did it best? Our water break concludes soon after. Henry gathers us all in again. We're going to mix the teams up one more time. Let's get into our position groups again. This time I'm assigned to Team 5. That means... Sweet, we're together. Hey, Kirk. A human with dirty blonde hair and lightly tanned skin turns around. Hey. Hey. Might as well introduce myself. I'm Evan. All right. I played for Oak Hills College. You may have seen me before. Mm, I transferred from Morango. Cool. Oh, no. I'm not salty about you guys beating us in playoffs. Dude, I was still talking to you. Was I being annoying? No, he's just a man of few words. Phew, I thought my community college talk was bothering him. Could you not talk about community college for five minutes? No, that's fine. I'll be more talkative when we play. That would help for sure. Marcus looks at Kirk. Well, what row should we start in? A two. I'll be OH2. You can dig OH1. So, Kirk started in the front row then. Kind of shocked he'd put Marcus in the back row for three whole rotations. You typically want the bigger guy to get up front ASAP. Okay. Yes, he doesn't mind. Then again, he's never one to complain. 
This time we're receiving first. The opposing team server snags a nearby ball and gets behind the line. Want to take left seams? Right seams. Okay. Maybe he's an excellent passer like Marcus. Between the three of us, he'll be covering the most ground. In power move, I say so myself. Marcus steps back, prepping for an expected deep serve. Turns out he's right as the ball flies high for a while. However, mine. Kirk gives a decent pass to our setter. Got it. Marcus and I scoot left to defend. Kirk's already standing on the sideline, ready to hit. Speedy guy. Ball goes off the opposing block, flying behind Kirk's head and towards me. I go. Kirk backpedals and takes the ball from extended to make an overhand pass. It's not too good, but it's enough to the setter to get a hand on it. He sets Kirk again, lobbing a slow high set to him. <laughs> he rolls the ball into the net with a whip-like motion. Seems to get whatever he's feeling out as he saunters back to his receiving position. Marcus reaches for a high five and gets a limp one in return. Whatever, next point. Weird. Just get ready for the next serve. Several points later. Marcus calls to a fast outside set. Go, go, go! Set the pick. However, Kirksey mind overrides the German Shepherd. Kirk makes an attack from the back row, leaping over the 10 foot line and landing only a couple of feet from the net. The swing stays in play as George, our opponent's libero, scoops the ball up with no problem. Kirk runs to himself. A setter, Henry, gives a smooth yet fast set to the backside hitter. Marcus prepares to block. The ball goes right off Marcus's block, vaulting towards the back right corner of our side. It's coming your way, Kirk. Kirk cannot get there in time, only able to get one arm on the ball. It deflects down, landing ten feet away from the net. He grits his teeth for a couple of seconds, but huffs it off with a shrug and head shake. Well, I can move in a little if you want. No, I got this. You'll get it next time. I know. Okay then. Cook doesn't look frustrated, judging by his walk. His words say otherwise. So I can't believe he talked back to Marcus like that. What's he ever done to him? What's his problem? The man should say it low enough not get a reaction from Kirk. And he's really trying to impress the captains this year. Hey, let's side out here. Seems like he's be to become captain too. I thought you said George and Henry were the captains. Oh, for the A team. Maybe he wants to lead the B team. That's why he wants to move up teams. I thought I was making a big deal out of this. We should get set now. Marcus and I get back to receive, alongside Kirk. The serve goes to Marcus, who gives a generous high pass. The ball may be a few more feet off the net than what's ideal, but it's still good enough to give our setter two options. Hut! Hut! He chooses Marcus, giving him a slow high set on the left pin. Marcus begins his momentum forward. Two blockers are lined up against him. He doesn't have many choices where to swing. There's only one viable option. Your angle's open! Marcus gets his arms around the ball, taking an approach for the angle shot. As his body rotates, he makes a swift swing, hitting off the middle block his left hand. The ball ricochets off the block back to our side, goes right and lands between our two other two hitters. Mark. You need to listen to me. I was calling for a line shot and you straight up ignored me. Sorry, I gave him a bad call. That's not your call to make. My bad. Don't worry about it. Usually Libero makes that call. He mutters to himself. Want to run that by me? Kirk turns and takes a step towards him. Should I stand up for my roommate? Yes. Marcus has a point. Kirk cocks his head slightly. Marcus is equally stunned, left in silence. I know what I'm doing. He walks back to his receiving position, moving on as if our brief chat never happened. Well, thanks for having my back. Of course, man. We continue on with the match, preparing to receive the next serve. 
While he may have been taken aback at first, Marcus seems to be in better spirits now. I think he even has a slight grin on his face. Probably isn't from Kirk being called out. He would never revel in anyone's pity. It's still there when he glances my way for a brief second. Our attention is suddenly diverted by the server smacking the ball. 16, serving 12. The ball is sent left, aimed between Kirk and Marcus. I go. Despite Kirk's initial objection, lets Marcus take the pass. The ball reverses spin as soon as it goes off his arms. It flies smoothly to the middle, four feet from the net. My setter, who I still do not get the name of, gets under the ball with ample time. Meanwhile, everyone lines up to hit. It's anyone's set at this point. Pick. Kirk gets his wish as the ball is redirected just in front of the ten-foot line. He makes a two-step jump soaring over the line. Two up. Left side's open. Kirk gets next and crack of the ball, beating off their middle blocker's left hand. The ball lands out of bounds on their side. Nice swing, Kirk. He responds with an upbeat huff as he high-fives me and Marcus. Like Kirk's demeanour, our trajectory has gone upwards, keeping us within one point of tie-in. The next serve goes between me and Kirk. I take it, Evan. I got it. The ball is set to Marcus, who manages to trip the other team with an off-speed tip. Nice work, Marcus. Marcus weighs everyone in to celebrate the point. You answer something. Area 2 has been left wide open. Kirk's been given little tippets between points, while Marcus hurts everyone in. It become a good duo of this game. We might just squeeze it out with a two-point victory. Both sides are pretty happy with the competition. Even on the losing side, nobody appears to be salty. Well, good stuff, everyone. Both teams exchange high fives. I'm glad things managed to end on a high note. Henry calls everyone in for a final time. Thanks right, so for coming, everyone. I'll have another open gym on Wednesday. Tryouts will not be next Monday, but the following Monday, same time as tonight. Other than that, he puts a hand on his chin and brings it back down. That's all I got. Let's bring it in. Just like the beach practice, we all come in with an arm raised, closed fist. SV on three. One, two, three. SV! We spend a few minutes walking to the end of campus, indicated by an intersection in the road. I'll see you guys Wednesday. Have a good one. See ya. Kenny heads east, Marcus and I head west. Well, it's nice to be back with the club again. So, uh, what do you think? About the club? Yeah. Um, I don't think I have what it takes. Really? I thought you were fine. But there are so many good players and a bunch of varsity guys. They're all better than me. In honesty, they're probably looking for the bigger, more athletic varsity guys. So in that sense, yes. Well, I'm not sure about that. You have dedication and passion. That will take you far. Thanks, Marcus. I can't bend reality with my mindset. And passes were pretty sloppy today. I couldn't keep my pass average to 2.5, let alone a 2.25. I couldn't even defend that Grey Wolf's attacks. He's getting me every single time. I sigh again. Why is it always me who gets the short end of the stick? Marcus looks down and around, thinking. I probably stumped him. Well, um... It does suck you have the odds stacked against you. I wish I could help you there. I nod. I'll do all I can to help you out. Why do not things fall in place? I'll be here for you. Marcus, you kind soul. Thanks. I'm glad I could help. We don't talk much for the rest of our walk. I take in the crisp September night air. It's got to be no cooler than 70 degrees. Marcus is offering to go out of his way for me. He's normally not like this. He stays in his lane, not bringing attention to himself. Why would he do this for me? I don't have much to offer him. I've always been the weaker link of the group. Am I even worth fighting for? To be continued. Well, 
That was the latest update from Ocean Avenue. And of course, I always have the link so you can check out Dirk's Patron, which helps support Ocean Avenue, and I'll put a link there to his Twitch and YouTube channels. Uh, he's actually playing Pokemon on Twitch as I'm recording this. I'm not watching it because I know nothing about Pokemon, so I don't really follow what's going on there. But I'll put all those links there. Don't, don't forget, itch.io is where you can find Ocean Avenue. You can download it from there if you want to pay some money for it as well. You can, but it's otherwise free to play. I just can't put the link in because there have been issues with links recently. But that is, go and check out uh, all that. and uh, There's a survey you can fill out if you want to and let Dirk know what you think of it. Comment down below, he might see it, I don't know. Assume he watches these things. <laughs> uh, anyway, that is it for Ocean Avenue for now, which is good timing. Is hopefully my bread is proved. I'll have to go and check on that. But before we go, uh, next weekend we'll be returning to Minotaur Hotel. We'll check up on Asteria on the rest, see what's going on there. That will be that one. And yeah, working out what's going to happen through December yet. So I hope to get some more of the flowers in. White tiger's coming soon, trust me. And maybe there might actually be something new coming up before the end of the year. We'll have to check on that one and see how my schedule works. As always, before I finish off, thanks to all my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are very much appreciated. And my top level patrons are Omar, Big Booty Judy, Samuto, Andy Peng, Mohamed El Zamel, Aaron Fox, Exac, Evan King, Marcus, Cindy Dragowolf, Kopi, Spiderling, Grizz, Dissonance, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Tiger Cub, Brian Hall, Bastian, La Cascaton, Nesuksu, Kopus Visser, Kartek, and Burnt Toast. A special mention to all of them. And if you really have some spare cash and want to help out, you can always find my Patreon and Kofi links down below. But you don't have to, I know it's very difficult for everyone with cost of living and whatnot. I know I keep mentioning it, but I just want to reassure my patrons that I really do appreciate you. And if you've had to drop out recently, or you never need to sign up because money's tight, that's fine, I understand. Never worry about that. And with that thought, we will leave it right here for now until Mindor Hotel next weekend. I hope you all have a good week. Bye for now. <laughs>